So tonight I wanted to kind of talk about um, things that I've had to get over in the past in order to be successful with this business. So these are going to be things that I have struggled with along the way through my works journey. I've been in for about a year and eight months now. Um, and I've had awesome times in the business and then I've had kind of slower times in the business. And then I've had times where I find that the reason why it's slow is because I am dealing with something. And so I wanted to kind of name off a few of those for you guys. And maybe you've had this happen. And if not, that's great, but it may happen in the future. And I just want to let you know how I got past that. So number one thing that I've had to get over or the fifth, it kind of goes in order from like the least to the biggest. Okay. So is the slow times. All right. So slow times suck. And we do have things called slow seasons, even though some leaders will tell you there are no slow seasons, you make what kind of season you're going to have. And although I do believe that sometimes of the years are slower than others, I also believe that a lot of it has to do with how hard you're pushing yourself. What are you making your season out to be? So if you're not posting consistently, if you're not posting every single day, if you're not following people, if you're not building relationships, if you're not doing that whole list of things that we've talked about before, then you may not be quite as successful as a season where you did all of those things and you put your 110% into it. But now you're getting into this different season where really you're only given 70, 75%. Maybe some of you are even given like 40 to 50%, less than that at times, you know, and we can be honest with ourselves. I've had plenty of times where I'm just, I don't feel like working. I don't feel like taking a picture and making a post. I don't feel like adding and commenting new people because I'm so tired. I don't feel like building relationships, but those are things that in that recipe that I talk about, you have to have all of those things for your recipe to be really good. So you have to take all of the ingredients that are on the recipe list, you know, for the most part, if you're allergic to onions, don't put onions in it, whatever. But in a, in a theoretical sense, you know, if you don't, if you leave the chocolate chips out of a chocolate chip muffin recipe, it's not going to taste near as good because it doesn't have the chocolate chips in it. And our business is kind of like that. So there are so many things that need to go into it day to day, week to week, month to month that you need to be doing in order to keep those quote unquote slow times from happening. Because ultimately you do make your own season. When you wake up in the morning, they say the first 20 minutes of your day is what sets the pace for the rest of the day. So if you wake up feeling sorry for yourself or you wake up not motivated and not wanting to work, your whole day is likely to be like that. But if you wake up, and you watch a motivational video every single morning. That's what I try to do. I don't do it quite as much as I used to because the twins are cray cray lately. Um, but, you know, I try to watch a motivational video almost every single day. And I try to make that happen the first 20 to 30 minutes that I'm awake. So while they're having their morning bottles, I'll put on, even if it's just an audio motivational, something that you can listen to without having to sit down and watch it never actually watching it. I'm always doing other things, but I have it on because those are the, the first minutes of your day are going to set the pace for the rest of the day. So if you wake up motivated and ready to kick butt, you're going to kick butt that day because that's what kind of mood you're in. Your mindset really is everything in this. So um, slow times, really what I found, they do exist, but a lot of it is you telling yourself that it's a slow time. So get over that. Stop telling yourself that it's a slow time. Start telling yourself that you are a loyal customer in Roller Machine. You are a distributor in Roller Machine. You are a rock star. You know, tell yourself those things in the morning, every day when you go to bed, every day when you wake up, throughout the day if you're feeling sorry for yourself. Do not let that get you down because that is ultimately an excuse that you're making for the lack that you're giving to this business. Okay, so that's the first thing that I've had to get over and deal with. Um, the second thing is rejection. So we all have people that say no, and no is okay. Because in this business, we say no just means not right now. You know, eventually they are going to keep watching you, and they're either going to delete you, block you, unfriend you, um, or they're going to, I don't know, just not never talk to you again, or they're going to sign up. 
it's going to be one of the two kind of ordeals, one extreme or the other. And you should not care either way because those are still potential people. There have been so many people that I have messaged and they've said, no, thank you. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. Well, thank you for the support. And they still continue to like my pictures and they still follow me. And the trick of rejection is to get people to want to follow you, not for it works wise, but for your life, make your life interesting, be real, be true to who you are through your posts on social media, give them something to where they feel like following you is worthy. And then it's not so hard for rejection because they will come around because you are friends with them. You're following them back. You're commenting on their stuff. You know, if they do reject you, they're going to be nice about it. And who cares about the people that are just like, fuck no, stop messaging me. Cause we've all had those people that are just absolutely rude about it and whatever, get over them too. People, other people do not pay your bills. And this kind of leads into my next thing. And that is something that I've had to get over is um, the haters on a side note of rejection. We have haters everywhere. People have heard of this company and maybe have gotten, you know, pestered by somebody to buy products before, or maybe they've tried it themselves and it didn't work on them the first time. So they automatically think it's a huge scam or maybe they signed up to be a distributor and never did anything. And so they feel like the business is a scam. You know, we all have those people. And then we have the haters that we're friends with. We have the haters that we've been friends with since elementary school that no longer talk to us because we have been doing it works because we make good money because they're jealous of us. We've had family members who won't look at us when they're in the same room with us. I have several of those family members, people that are supposed to be there for you through thick and thin, no matter what family is everything in my family. And these people won't even look at me or say hi when I walk in the room and it's my cousins. So, you know, we've all had those people and did it bother me at first? Heck yes, it bothered me. It really hurt my feelings, especially when it comes to good friends and family. You know, that sucks. We don't want to lose good friends and family over something like this. But then at the same time, when I think about that, it's just like, okay, are they going to pay my bills? No. Are they going to make sure that my lights don't go off in my house? No. Are they going to take care of my kids or help me take care of my kids or help me stay at home with my kids to take care of them? No, they're not going to do any of that for me. So why does their opinion matter? They can sit and laugh at me and talk behind my back all I want to. I mean, all they want to, because in the end, they're either going to keep doing that and be in the same position that they are right now and never progress, or they're going to join me. And they're going to see that it's not a joke and it's not meant to be funny. And either way, I'm fine with. And I heard something tonight on Carrie Bauer's live video. I don't know if you guys watched it. It was like a couple hours ago. Or Carrie Young. Now she's Carrie Young. Um, but she was talking about the airlines. And it was kind of an aha moment for me. Um, and I've had a lot of those lately. So I don't know. Something, is, something big is coming. I can just feel it. Um, but she said, when you go to an airport, does American Airlines or Delta Airlines, do they stop the plane if they can't fill it up with people? Do they say, okay, you guys have to get off and find another plane because we're not full, so we can't take off? Like, no, they go no matter what. And that leads me into my next one is quitters. It's something that I've had to get over. People quit. They sign up, and then a month later, they quit. They sign up. They freaking go ruby and quit. They sign up. They go diamond and quit. They sign up, they don't do a darn thing, and they quit the next day. Like, it happens to all of us. And the quitters don't matter because you did not start for the quitters. You started for you. You started for your why, so you need to go and look at your why and realize that you're not doing this business for them. You're doing it for you. You're doing it for the reason why you joined is why you continue to go. Not because of everybody else. You still want to get to your destination on that plane, don't you? You still have places to go. How would you feel if they just shut the whole plane down and was like, sorry, you have to wait three hours so we can fill up a plane because we're not leaving without a couple people. Who cares? Leave. Bye. There are plenty of other people out there that have not heard about this company that need this company. And there's this statistic that says about 70% of 
Americans who live in the U.S. are three to five hundred dollars away every month from declaring bankruptcy. Like what bankruptcy? That's huge. Seventy percent of Americans are out there barely making it. And you guys are their answer to their prayer. You are, and you have to believe that. It is selfish of you to not share this opportunity with other people because other people need this. They're just skeptical. And I am speaking for myself, but I know a lot of you felt the same way. I was skeptical. I watched my upline for six to seven months before I finally jumped in. And I said, what the heck, it's $99, like whatever. If we lose $99, it won't be the first time that we did something stupid because we spend $99 on God knows what else every freaking week. So, you know, I just decided to jump in. I had never tried the products. I completely thought it was a scam. My husband was pissed at me for joining, but I did it anyway because I figured, why not? What if it does work? What if it can make me this kind of money? What if it can bring me home to my kids? Don't think about the what not. Like, what if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't work? You're just getting yourself into this sinkhole that you're digging yourself and putting on your negative Nancy hat and going about your life to try and make yourself feel better. And that's not, not what you should be doing. So that's the most one, um, the second to most one, I guess, that I've had to deal with is quitters because it is really tough to keep going when in this business you have to build a team in order to rank up. And so I get it. It's hard, but you have to understand that you have a why and you cannot let other people determine whether you're going to succeed or fail. You cannot let other people determine your future or your why because they don't have the dreams that you have. You know, some people like there's a saying, I don't remember who started this, but they said, um, I guess it might have been Pam Souter, <clears throat> but she said, everybody can do this job. Everybody can work this business, but everybody won't work this business. Okay. So it's simple enough for anyone to, to do, but some people are just not going to do it. Whether you talk till you're blue in the face, sometimes people just don't get it. They don't see the vision like you do. And that's okay because one day either they will or they won't. And you just move on. There have been so many people that start and they think they see the vision and they're so pumped up for three months. And then they just fall off because they didn't hit the Ruby bonus or somebody who has gotten to Ruby and above that just quits all of a sudden for no reason. You know, it happens to all of us, but you have to be Delta Airlines. You have to keep going. You have to not worry about the people that aren't in the seats that they're supposed to sit in. You know, you, you don't need to worry about those empty seats. You need to worry about the seats that are filled. So when Delta Airlines takes off in flight and their 150 seats aren't full, they worry about the 132 people that are on that flight and they get them to their destination safely. And that is what you have to do. You have to worry about the people that are still there, that still want this, that are still working. Maybe they're not running, but they're walking and walkers are better than sitters, you know? So worry about those people. Don't worry about the people that quit. I have over 170 people on my team. I have 82 or maybe 90 now people on the team page. And there are nine of us on this tonight you know, and you guys see the team page, a lot of people don't interact. So think about that, but I'm still here. I'm still going, I'm still posting because when I wake up and I look at my kids, I'm never going to tell them that they are not worthy of more. I'm never going to wake up in the morning and say, sorry, but you're not worth mommy working hard because other people quit. So I might as well quit on you too. You will never catch me doing that. So figure out whether this is that important to you, you know, find your why, make it a good one and work towards that. Don't work towards everybody else. Who cares about everybody else? They can go on and do their thing because eventually they may come back. You never know. Um, <clears throat> and the number one thing that I've had to get over in this business is excuses. I am so guilty of making excuses for myself all the time. And my husband didn't used to call me out, but now he will call me out in a heartbeat. Like you're doing this. You keep talking about it, but you're not doing it. Like 
he will call me out. And sometimes we need that. We need a good smack in the ass to like get up and go, you know? But that is the number one thing that I've had to deal with. And I think I shared this on a Periscope the other day. Um, my husband's like lifelong dream is to open up a gun range. Hold on. Okay, so he wants like this immaculate gun range. It's going to be like so different from every other gun range here. And I don't know, he's just super excited about it. So that is what he is ultimately working towards. He's in school for business. You know, he's working full time now so that we can save up money so we don't have to take as much loans out whenever we build it. We've got to find the right land, blah, 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 blah. So we are going to be spending tons of money going into debt before the gun range opens. But do you think that when he opens that gun range, he's going to walk out if nobody shows up the very first day he opens his doors? Do you think he's going to be like, all right, I quit. Uh, nobody came my first day, so I'm out. Like, no. Do you think he's going to be like that after a week or even after a month? No. He put so much money and time and effort and decision making, and he's hired all these people, and all of this work goes into building his own business. He's not going to close his doors. He'd probably give it at least a year. And in this business, they say, give it a year, and it'll change your life but you have to give it a year of your best effort. You can't give it a year of half-ass effort because it's not gonna change your life, honestly. If you get comfortable where you are and you're so comfortable that you're not uncomfortable with your situation, you're not gonna go very far because you're comfortable. You have to step outside of your comfort zone and keep going. So like I said with him, you know, and he's gone into so much debt to do this. Like, let's say it's already open because I'm talking like future tense and you're like, what, he already have one? No, not really. I'm just talking future tense. But let's say he did already have it open. We've put so much money into this. So my second little tidbit on this whole excuses thing is that you paid $99. You didn't pay $300,000 to open a gun range. You're not paying other employees to work for you. You're not paying a like tax specialist and a building specialist and a landscaper and all these other people. You didn't have to really go into debt when you joined this company. And I think so many people give up because of that reason, because it was so cheap. But I know for a lot of you guys, $99 is a lot, especially when you're broke. You're living from paycheck to paycheck. $99 is a lot. So you tell me why you can't invest more in your future for $99. If my husband would do it after $300,000 in and nobody came in the first day, like don't quit on yourself. Stop giving yourself excuses. And another big excuse that I give myself all the time is that I'm too busy. The kids are driving me crazy. I just want to sit here and not do anything. I'd love to watch a Grey's Anatomy episode right now. Like I give those <laughs> excuses to myself all the time and I have to snap out of it because that's the reason why I am where I am and I'm not triple diamond yet. That is the reason because I give myself excuses and I sit there on the couch and play Candy Crush for 30 minutes instead of working. I'm guilty of it and so are you guys. You know it. None of us sit on our phones 24 seven and that's okay. And sometimes when we sit on our phone, our phones, we're playing games instead of doing producing income producing activities, but stop giving yourself the, the time excuse. There have been people to make it to ambassador diamond that have full-time jobs and kids and people that I talked about, like on the last zoom, if you guys were on the last week's zoom about the lady I met on the cruise that homeschools six, kids she has six kids she homeschools them all and two of them have autism and she is presidential diamond and so i'm sitting here complaining about my twins and it's like what six kids are you freaking kidding me and you're presidential diamond and a lot of you guys are thinking oh she just must assign the right people no i heard all about this lady's story and she's amazing and she's going to hop on one of our zooms in the next week or two so i'm excited about that um but <clears throat> she has gone through the same hurdles that everybody else has gone through. Her, her life may seem perfect on social media, like a lot of you guys do, because that's what we're here 
to do. We're here to spread positivity. We're here to spread love. We're here to spread excitement about our company and products. And so everything we put on social media is like this, you know, sugar coating to our life. But really, you guys don't see what goes on in my day to day life. I am busy. Like, it's not an excuse sometimes. I am legit sweating by like 9.30 in the morning, like legit to where I stink and I need a shower. I'm not kidding you. It is so bad some days, but when I get a second, I find myself sitting down and being like, okay, I just want to relax a minute instead of working my butt off. And that's the reason why I am, why I'm here where I am, just like I said before. So decide for yourself whether the excuses are whether you're making your excuse, your why your excuse, or whether you're working towards making your why and your dreams come true, okay? Because that's something that's the biggest thing that I've struggled with, and it is really, really hard. But the thing that helps me the most is to make a task list for the day, and I use the task list that I posted on the team page. I don't know when it was. Like, it was a while back, I think. Um, but I use that every single day, and I try and get all of those things done at like by nighttime. And if I don't, then I'll try and double up on them the next day. So having it in front of me, it's in my phone and it's on a sheet of paper. Having it in front of me makes me want to, makes me, it like reminds me to do it. Also scheduling posts are really good for that. So there's really, the, the point I'm getting at is there's really no excuse for saying that you don't have time because other people that are in way different situations, way busier situations are Ambassador Diamond right now. And it's not about the people that you sign. A lot of us don't ever have a rock star and that's okay. You are your own rock star and you join this business for you. So going back to that, remember you joined it for you, not for everybody else. Who gives a crap whether they're a rock star or not? You need to keep working because it's your why that's on the line. It's your dream that's on the line. Nobody else's. So those are the one, two, three, four, five things that I struggle with the most in this business and kind of how I got over them. Um, personal development though is huge because seriously, if you are not in a physically and emotionally millionaire state of mind, you are not going to be a millionaire. People that are millionaires believe that they are going to be millionaires. They believe that they're going to be successful. They can't, you can't sit and beat yourself up about everything all day long, every day. Y'all, I haven't signed a customer in over a week. That is huge for me. That sucks. But am I over here crying about it? Like, no, I'm about to sign one right now. Because if you keep going, good things will happen. But you have to keep going in order for them to happen. Because if I would have quit a long time ago, I would not be a stay-at-home mom right now. I would not be making over $5,000 a month for literally doing nothing except for posting on my phone and talking to people. And I'm just double diamond. There are three or four more ranks up there that I'm going to get to. And so will you guys, but you have to keep going. Because like I said, if I would have quit when I didn't meet my Ruby bonus a year and a half ago almost, I would not be where I am right now. And I wouldn't be where I am without you guys. And so you have to keep going too. So, does anybody have any questions about anything that I said, or you can ask me a question about anything else while we're on the Zoom if you want to.